Looking out over this vast alien landscape, we cannot help but wonder what creatures might be waiting out there in the vast void of space, waiting patiently for man to contact them. What kind of world is it? It looks completely inhospitable, and yet we cannot be certain. Who knows what creatures, what monsters might be lurking in the vast depths of this planet, living in vast subterranean cities with a culture far in advance of ours. The mountains of this strange planet seem forbidding, remote, completely uninhabited. But in the vast design of space, this planet is only one small cog in a vast galaxy of stars and possible alien life forms. What's that blue glow out there in space, that deep and mysterious aura which we see phosphorescing in front of us, turning the blackness of space into an eerie fireworks of unearthly origin? As we watch, the aura changes colors, turning from blue to red, shifting through all the colors of the rainbow. What is this strange glowing light? Is it a beacon from an alien civilization telling man that he is not alone in the uncharted depths of the universe? Or is it some natural phenomena? Cosmic dust, gas, or some passing shower of meteor dust? Glowing in white-hot intensity, the aura changes colors again to a blazing white. Now it collapses into nothingness, fading back into the distance as our Earth passes in the foreground. What was it? Perhaps someday we will find out. But perhaps we will never know. Did anyone on Earth see this strange display from outer space? And even if they did, do they have any way of knowing what forces were behind this strange cosmic manifestation? We ourselves are only a tiny speck on the vast design of things, no smaller than the center of a carbon atom in relation to its own small universe. And in the vast void of space at the mercy of strange cosmic forces which we cannot predict and in many cases know absolutely nothing about, our own Earth seems such a small and insignificant planet. But out in space, the radio signals we send out let other possible civilizations know that we do exist and that we have a culture. What might alien visitors think of our earthly laws and customs? Might they not consider us mere barbarians in the truest sense of that word? The barbarians and Stone Age men of the universe? Here we see a small object in space hovering next to a large red planet, very much like our own Mars. Is this small white object in the night sky an alien visitor from outer space, coming to us with a message of doom and destruction? Do the solar flares and prominences of the sun indicate cycles of UFO activity, signaling by their eruption that a new series of UFO visitations is about to begin? Do these spectacular displays of volcanic fury on the surface of the sun herald strange visitors from worlds beyond our own? In the past, UFO visitations have been linked by Project Blue Book, the Air Force manual on such activities, with atomic testing and weather disturbances and cycles of the sun and the moon. The controversy continues as the issues go round and round and round. The Air Force case study of UFOs, Project Blue Book, was abandoned in the late 1960s as having proved that UFOs did not exist. But even though the Air Force abandoned all research into the subject of UFOs, the rumors and reports of UFO activity continue to the present day. The Earth travels through space enveloped in an atmosphere of protective gases, which shield out harmful cosmic rays and give us oxygen, the gas necessary to permit human life to exist. Only on Earth does oxygen exist in large enough quantities to support life as we know it. But what about a life form unlike our own? Could it not exist in a very different atmosphere? Out in deep space, we have sentinels of the skies searching for the answers to the astounding questions which have plagued both scientists and laymen for more than three decades. These sentinels send back valuable information about the weather, conditions in space, the surface features of many alien planets, and the atmosphere we would discover on that planet if we landed in a manned space probe. But more than that, these sentinels of mankind search the heavens for proof of UFOs. Do UFOs really exist? Is there an alien visitation in our future? Are we headed for a conclusive, final, all-convincing, close encounter? We cannot be certain. 
and the U.S. government's position on UFOs remains unchanged. But as the days go by, reports of UFO visitations continue to flood into newspaper offices, police stations, and the military. Just as in the case of our mysterious glow from space, there are many questions to be answered. What exactly are the UFOs that we read about in the newspapers and hear about on TV? What causes all these reports of UFO sightings and alien visitations? Are these sightings easily explained away as weather balloons, other natural phenomena, or publicity stunts and media hoaxes? Or do these UFO sightings represent genuine proof that we are being visited by creatures from other worlds? As far as we know, Earth is the only inhabited planet in the entire solar system. But how can we be sure? How can we be certain that the Earth is just one of many planets, all inhabited with their own races, waiting for us to contact them so that we can all join hands and be neighbors in the universe? What's that strange, mysterious spacecraft behind that crag? Is it one of our spacecraft, our vanguard ship for an alien invasion? No. It's only one of our own Earth exploratory probes which we send out to sample the soil and weather conditions on alien planets in preparation for a manned visit to the planet. The sensitive instrumentation on board the space probe sends back information which will be of vital importance in deciding our future space program. In addition to taking soil samples, the built-in antenna of the space probe listens intently for signs of alien communications. The probe deftly digs out a small sample of rock and dirt from the planet's surface and then analyzes the dirt inside the probe itself. The probe sends back the information it discovers in code to Earth headquarters. The radio signals of the craft are then deciphered and can form photographs, chemical analyses, or give valuable data on the precise temperature for various times of day on the planet's surface. All of this scientific data is necessary if one day man is to conquer the universe instead of being a prisoner on his own planet, looking out longingly at the stars, wondering what vast, unimaginable secrets the heavens may have in store for him. And to that end, the research goes on, grain by grain, adding more information to the picture we have of the amazing universe around us. Man is small, like a grain of sand in the vast design of the cosmos. The winds of change may blow across the earth, but man endures. And although the winds of change may be harsh, and many men and women may pay the supreme price for scientific knowledge, eventually, mankind will be allowed to take that final step into the universe and join the universal fraternity of interplanetary brotherhood. For is not man truly a child of the universe? Man's civilization is merely a thing of several thousand years. But what might an alien civilization have accomplished over its many millions of years of evolution? Space travel, destructive rays, teleportation. All these things might easily be within the grasp of an alien intelligence. Even time travel is not out of the question. And as man reaches out into the universe, who knows what amazing secrets will be waiting to be unlocked? Who knows what astounding mysteries are out there in the vastness of space, waiting for mankind to discover them? Who knows what forms alien life might take? It could be anything. Even these little glistening grains of sand might be some seeds of an alien intelligence traveling through space across the millions of galactic miles, searching for a new home in which to survive and flourish. Might not these alien spores land on Earth? And might not these strange alien civilizations find in Earth the most hospitable environment imaginable? These alien civilizations might bring peace, knowledge, and understanding, but they might also bring death, destruction, and evil as they spread a red glow of carnage through our Earth, reducing it to nothing but a slaughterhouse, an alien food breeding ground. Who knows what our alien visitors might have in store for us in some future invasion from outer space. And these alien forms, how did they develop? Was their genesis very like our own here on Earth? And is their life cycle designed much the same as our own? Or do these alien visitors need little food, no air, existing only on rocks or some gas which is deadly to us? 
Who can tell what sort of life one might find on a distant planet far beyond the boundaries of our own solar system? In all the vastness of the universe, we have no way of knowing what our future visitors might look like or what their motives might be. Our alien visitors may come in peace, or they may come to fight a battle to the death. And who do you think will win? If the aliens have a civilization advanced enough to permit them to travel freely from planet to planet, who can tell what sort of horrifying weapons they might possess and what regard they might not have for human life forms? Perhaps they would look at us and see only a race of ignorant savages bent on self-destruction. What will save us then when we have been condemned by our own interplanetary neighbors to an existence of servitude and enslavement, furnishing food or labor for a vast alien occupying army? again. Perhaps this land was once populated by a race not unlike ours. And what happened to it? No one can be certain. Did a UFO buzz the presidential helicopter? On June 17, 1978 at 1.30 p.m., Jimmy Carter took off from the White House lawn in his presidential copter. A passerby snapped this picture of what appears to be a UFO trailing the copter. True or false, we can't be certain. This skateboard UFO was seen from a plane over Staffordshire in Britain on April 1st, 1966. This is a frame from an eight millimeter home movie. Is this a UFO? No explanation has ever been given for this photo. This UFO was photographed in September of 1973 by a professional news photographer near Pelham, Georgia. Does this picture show a UFO in flight in the night sky? This photo, taken during the early fall of 1973, also near Pelham, Georgia, also shows some unidentified flying object in the night sky, something which the Air Force could not explain. Is this an alien ship investigating our planet? Is this a photograph of an alien visitor? This picture was taken on a highway in the deep south and has never been explained although the photo was subjected to intensive analysis. Is this an alien visitor signaling us of his existence? In this photo, we get a clearer picture of the creature. Note how the creature glows and sparkles in the night blackness. Is this because of his skin or because of a protective atmosphere he has around himself? These mysterious bowls of fire were seen floating in the night sky over St. Valier de T, France. This photograph was taken in 1966. What are these strange messengers from the skies? Are these UFOs? These glowing flying saucer shapes were photographed in May of 1957 over Yokohama, Japan. They flew in a classic V formation, 
as UFOs have done in many documented UFO sightings. Are these saucers visitors from outer space? These six UFOs were photographed near Tombstone, Arizona in 1968. They flew over the desert for hundreds of miles and were viewed by many reliable witnesses. No explanation has ever been advanced for these strange glowing objects in the skies. These saucer-shaped UFOs were seen over the airport in Omura, Japan. UFO sightings often take place near nuclear power plants, test sites, and near airports. Are UFOs keeping tabs on our nuclear progress and our air transport system? This astonishing photograph of a UFO was taken near Picacho Peak, New Mexico by a passerby who happened to snap the picture with his small camera. No satisfactory explanation for this photo has ever been advanced, and it joins the ever-expanding files of UFO visitations. This incredible photograph was taken by a flight attendant at the famed Orly Airfield near Paris, France. While loading a plane with passengers and supplies, the attendant looked up to see this blazing UFO directly above him. This is a very early photograph of a flying saucer-shaped UFO taken in the zoological gardens at Basel, Switzerland in 1907 and shows a clearly unmistakable UFO shape. This photo has defied any attempts at analysis for over 40 years. This dark spherical craft was photographed following a bomber of the Japanese Imperial Navy during World War II, photographed in 1942 by the Japanese Ministry of Information. The Japanese government circulated the photo widely, but could find no explanation for it. Do UFOs exist? What are UFOs? Where do they come from? What do they want from us? Man has asked these questions for decades and is still searching for additional information to help him answer these important puzzling questions. Technically, a UFO is an object that refuses to identify itself to authorized personnel on the ground or in the air and is therefore known as an unidentified flying object. But although the Air Force likes to hush up the number of UFO sightings which have taken place since World War II, the fact remains that although the official government file on the subject of UFOs is closed, the controversy rages on today more strongly than ever before. Every new day brings us additional information about the astounding solar system around us. What is that strange object circling this sun of a distant solar system? It's not a planet. Any planet that close to the sun would be pulled into its gravitational field. Our own sun is a boiling mass of molten lava and volcanic gases spinning dizzily in the heavens at the center of our solar system. Mankind maps the sun and tells from a study of the sun's spot patterns and eruptions what changes will occur in earthly weather patterns. But there is an additional connection between sunspots and volcanic activity and the number of UFO sightings which ordinarily occur. At that time when the sun is at its most volcanic fury, with a great number of sunspots and disturbances, the number of UFO sightings dramatically increases. Could there be an alien civilization living at the core of the sun? Or a control center at the core of the sun? which guides alien ships on their nightly visits to Earth. We know the sun's exterior is molten, but could there be a cool core at the center of all that volcanic activity? What a perfect location for alien scout ships to depart from, undetected, unnoticed, and close to the Earth, as well as the other planets. Who can tell? Is there an alien civilization at the center of the sun? What is the connection between the activity on the surface of the sun and cycles of UFO activity? Similarly, when the moon is full, the number of UFO sightings dramatically increases. Is this coincidence, or is it a real link in the UFO question? Spectroscopic analysis of photographs of the sun taken by telescopes and other space probes which pass close to the sun may give us some answers to the question of life on other planets. But the more we know, the more the mystery deepens.
Is it the signal of another intelligent life form trying to communicate with us? And what is that mysterious white object circling that red alien planet? Is it one of their scout ships, perhaps returning from a mission to Earth? The more we know about the universe, the more we realize how little we really know. As we travel through space, come with us on an imaginary tour of the galaxies as we explore the mysteries of deep space, searching for answers to the UFO controversy. What's that spiral of cloud dust ahead of us? Is it another galaxy? Another corner of intelligent life in the vast, illimitable void of the universe? Is it the home of an alien civilization far advanced from our own primitive culture? In observatories around the world, scientists keep watch, looking for a key to unlock the mysteries of the universe. What are these mysterious rays from outer space? Are they a communication from an intelligent alien visitor? Are they probe rays which chart the surface of our planet for some alien cartography mission? Far out in the vast reaches of space, man continues to send up probes, continues to send up explorer satellites, continues to look beyond the boundaries of the Earth's atmosphere for the answers to the continuous question. Do UFOs exist? Is there life on other worlds? Are we being watched by creatures from outer space? And while the research continues, the mystery deepens. These deep dish radar telescopes keep watch on the skies, listening for advance warning signs of a possible impending visit from a civilization far in advance of ours, far out in deep space, beyond the reach of our more conventional telescopes. In ancient days, man sailed the seas for adventure. Ancient astronomers, philosophers, mathematicians, and other sages first discovered the basic secrets of the universe thousands of years ago. And although the basic facts have been unearthed, the real work is just beginning. These discoveries of the past have only paved the way for the discoveries of the future. Thomas Edison, the great American inventor, invented the electric light, the phonograph, and many other inventions which eased life for the average American. Henry Ford gave us the Model T in the first American assembly line. The Wright brothers gave man his wings on that historic day at Kitty Hawk. Lindbergh flew where man had not dared to fly before. Einstein split the atom and developed the theories of relativity which made space travel possible. But as we rocket into the space age, we must think of our past and of how little we know, how much we have yet to learn. Are we alone? Do UFOs exist? Is there life on other worlds? Are we being monitored by an alien civilization very different from our own? This disc-shaped object was photographed near Kyoto City, Japan in 1967. This luminous UFO was seen near Mount Shasta in California and photographed in the summer of 1967. The photographer was a traveler who was snapping a picture of the mountain when he noticed the UFO hovering in the sky. This UFO was seen emerging from a mothership by a passenger flying on a commercial airline flight over Japan. Since World War II, there have been increasing numbers of UFO reports coming from Japan. In many respects, these reports match the UFO seen in this December 1961 photo. This UFO was seen in the New Jersey night sky in January of 1977. A man was out in his backyard looking at the stars in the twilight when he saw the UFO hovering directly over his backyard. He took this picture and this next picture with a small pocket camera. In the lower right corner, you can see a neighbor who joined the man and swore to the UFO's sighting. The authorities investigated, but could find no explanation for the UFO incident. These extraterrestrial visitors were snapped on a summer evening in Georgia, when two men returning from a poker game walking along a road saw strange glowing shapes in the distance. This photo shows a number of alien visitors advancing to meet the Earthlings. 
This UFO sighting took place on May 7, 1952, of the Barre de Tijuca, a suburb of Rio de Janeiro. The sighting was witnessed by a number of people, including a policeman. In June 1967, this UFO was seen flying very low over the ground in San Jose de Valdera, Spain. More than 50 people saw the UFO, which is clearly visible in this astonishing photograph. Although man has conducted studies of the planets costing many millions of dollars, our equipment is still in a very primitive state. Consider that these photographs are the clearest we have of our planetary neighbors. At Mission Control, scientists help keep watch over the vast technological display printouts which spew forth the information collected by our silent sentinels in the skies. Hatched into the computer, a scientist has a direct pipeline to the cosmos. As changing atmospheric data are monitored, it is instantaneously transmitted back to Earth for evaluation by government scientists. In addition to assembling weather data, these sentinels of the skies plot possible trajectory patterns for manned satellites, which will survey the Earth and the heavens. And far out in space, who knows what we may find? The path of one of our satellites may intersect with a planet of unknown origin. Who can tell what astounding data that satellite would send back? And the research goes on with the cost reckoned into many billions of dollars. Research done at centers around the country where top scientists meet to exchange ideas and evaluate data. In a relaxed informal atmosphere, scientific research involving the use of computers encodes and sorts the many millions of bits of information which have been assembled. Weather conditions, atmospheric data, lifespans of stars and galaxies, and puts all of the data into meaningful evaluation. With their photographic receivers, scientists can now have close-up photographs of a planet within 15 minutes as probe satellites spinning by an alien world snap off pictures which are transmitted in color back to Earth on a radio beam. These pictures give us a much more accurate idea of what our universe really looks like. The rings of Saturn have many possible explanations. Most likely, the rings are an accumulation of cosmic dust and debris. And the rings are also probably composed of poisonous gases. But it is possible that the rings are really alien command posts, functioning as space stations in disguise, or the vanguard of an alien invasion from outer space. uncharted. Mankind knows very little about the secrets of the universe. The planets which float majestically through space may be our friends or our enemies. In this trail of red cosmic dust we see the debris left behind by the death of a planet. Perhaps a planet very much like our own. A planet with a past but now with no future. Or a new planet might be created out of a haze of dust, primordial rock and stone, and a certain something that gives it the spark of life. As we sit thinking, waiting for a sign from the heavens, civilizations are being born, and civilizations are perishing, far away in the universe beyond the world we know and understand. Out in space, the continual drama of life and death unfolds. And here on Earth, in the world of nature, the never-ending drama of the struggle to survive goes on and on. In the morning, in the quiet serenity of a marshland on the coast of Maine, the world seems at peace, fulfilled, rewarding. The world of man seems very far away. But man continually intrudes upon the world of the natural, putting his own enormous planes into the air, crowding our skies with millions of planes, leading to accidents and destruction through poor management of our natural resources. Man, who hoped to mimic the flight of the birds, 
has become a polluter of the skies, mocking the serene natural order of things in the universe. How long can an alien civilization watch how we squander our resources and not speak to us? Or attempt to instruct us, to teach us the way of harmonious communion with the universe? of flight were primitive, playful, romantic pastimes which no one took seriously. Man's early attempts at flight were bumbling comic affairs, which seldom worked and aroused more scientific contempt than admiration. Consider that these films of the early days of flight were taken only a half a century ago. Consider only how recently man stepped into the race for space. How primitive we must seem to some alien super-civilization. Our early dreams of flight were cruel mockeries of the concept of heavier-than-air travel. But bit by bit, the picture was changing. Mankind has always been a modifier, a designer, an experimenter. And now he has improved upon the basic design of the early flying machine and created planes which led him onward into a series of aerial triumphs. First, the early planes, and then the race for space. Science fiction now, but in the future, who can say? This huge extraterrestrial tanker is mining the surface of an alien world for much needed mineral and fuel supplies. In our sophisticated technological future, our primitive early steps into the world of flight will seem pale indeed. And every day, New designs for the spaceships of the future come off the drawing board. Our own aircraft have developed into sleek, stratospheric, supersonic fighter planes capable of traveling at many times the speed of sound. Perhaps one day mankind will be able to travel at the speed of light. Here is a UFO which was photographed flying away from the Earth near a Madrid suburb of Aluje in Spain. This astounding photo was taken in 1966. In 1958, military and civilian witnesses were amazed to see UFOs over the Brazilian military ship, the Almirante Saldana, flying over the crags of the mountains nearby. In these two incredible photographs, you can barely make out the outline of the UFO, because according to eyewitnesses, it was constructed of a sort of aluminum transparent material, which glowed slightly and was not easy to photograph. This incredible UFO photo was taken near Melbourne, Australia in April 1966. It shows a UFO in the classic flying saucer shape, hovering over a factory site near the Australian city. A 15-year-old boy took this incredible UFO photograph with an inexpensive instant camera during February 1973. Several of his friends witnessed the incident as well. This is a diagram of a UFO based on the sighting of a witness in Portland, Oregon in 1958. The eyewitness was a mechanic at an airfield and he took notes with a sketch pad as he watched the UFO. The UFO hovered over his head for about five minutes, and then it vanished. These pictures were taken in 1974 in Brazil, near Piatan, Salvador. They show the saucer executing a difficult reverse motion, and correcting its flight path in the air is an astounding maneuver. These pictures have been examined by many experts, and all have declared that they feel the photos are genuine. And is it so incredible that we should
should be visited by flying saucers, spaceships, and other craft from deep space. Our own aerial satellites now span the universe with many, many interconnecting paths. These satellites provide us with the information we need to better understand our universe. Should not another civilization also send out space probes to send back information for their use? For good or for evil? Can we expect an attack from deep space? To prevent such a possibility, or at least to avoid being attacked without any warning, mankind is developing space outposts for our own manned observer ships. And from their vantage point in the skies, these observers will be able to send back information which will better help us to be prepared in the event of an alien attack. In addition, these outposts can provide us with information vital to our defense against foreign powers who might try to surprise us with a sneak nuclear attack. The many monitoring panels of the spacecraft send back much vital information, taking readings of the temperature, atmospheric composition, and also continually monitoring all frequencies for any possible radio communication by an alien intelligence. Are we being watched by aliens in the skies? With these early warning outposts, we may have a fighting chance in the event of an alien attack. And it could happen. As H.G. Wells foretold in his immortal science fiction classic, The War of the Worlds. As we continue to travel through deep space, we ask ourselves many questions. Many questions for which there can be no answer. Not at the moment, in any event. But manned outposts like this one will help us feel more at home in the vastness of the universe. To have a place of refuge from the hostile environment of outer space. For although man may conquer outer space, he will forever remain a visitor there, not a part of it. attack does occur, 
it is likely that we will be the losers. How can our primitive weapons hope to withstand the onslaught of invaders from outer space, from beyond the furthest galaxy? Traveling through deepest space, we feel alone, vulnerable, unprotected, and we wonder, are we alone in the universe? Are there other beings out there who may someday show themselves to us? out there in the vast void of the universe, waiting for us in the vast, illimitable dominion of interstellar space. Are the creatures there humanoid, or are they foul, nightmarish apparitions which will come from the stars delivering death? Does the sun affect cycles of UFOs? Is there a link between the sunspot activity noticed at regularly recurring intervals and the UFO reports, which invariably flood government officials after a heavily active sunspot period? These questions still are unsolved and still the subject of further research. And what would life be like on an alien world? What would their values be? What would an alien think of our earthly civilization? What would we think of his civilization? Would we meet a visitor from outer space with guns or with understanding? The future holds many things for us, but there is one thing we can always be certain of. In all the vastness of the universe, it seems unlikely that there is not some other form of life out there waiting for us. took place recently in Switzerland and these incredible photographs taken by an Australian traveler clearly show in sequence the flight of a classic flying saucer in and around a grove of trees. These pictures have been subjected to exhaustive analysis and found to be completely genuine by most respected scientists and UFO researchers. close-up is a view of the saucer magnified as the disc-shaped craft from another galaxy slips behind a clump of trees. If this photo does not offer convincing proof that UFOs from other worlds are visiting the Earth, we cannot think of anything that does. A camper on a summer vacation looking for firewood in the forest near Cluj, Romania spotted this classic disc-shaped UFO hovering over the ground, high over the treetops. The camper and his wife spotted the UFO and quickly took a series of photos of the UFO in flight. The Air Force and other authorities tried to dismiss these photos as a hoax. But all five of these astonishing photographs show the unmistakable outlines of a UFO in flight. The authorities tried to dismiss the incident as a weather balloon sighting. This object is a clear disc shape and looks nothing like a weather balloon. What is this strange visitor from outer space? What does it search for? 
Will the UFO return to its planet with information which will pave the way for a successful alien invasion from beyond the stars? Only time will tell. And the search for knowledge continues. Mankind continually tests his boundaries, exploring the universe around him and searching for new ways to understand and unlock the secrets of creation. Will man someday reach the skies and take his place as one of the rulers of the stars? Will mankind finally unlock the last secret of the universe and searching through the galaxies at last find that he is truly master of all that he surveys or lord of the universe by name and right? Mankind's researches continue, but man has so much to overcome if he is ever to usefully apply the knowledge which he has gained. For all the wonders of science and all the creations of mankind are of no use to us unless we can apply them with compassion and human understanding. Mankind's voyage through the universe of knowledge is a continually unfolding affair, a mystery tour which has no ending and no beginning. For the more that man knows, the more he realizes how little he really understands, how much he has yet to learn. A closer look at the universe, perhaps, but man must continue to look to himself if he truly wants to master all the secrets of time and space. For the future will belong to those who can use knowledge wisely, not wastefully. The future will belong to those who can understand the mysteries of the universe and then put that knowledge to work for the betterment of mankind. Man is still a long way from being the ruler of the skies, but he is getting there. And since that historic giant step onto the surface of the moon, man may at last have grown up enough to consider himself one of the family of the universe at peace with himself and in harmony with the unfolding mysteries of the world about him. And as scientific research continues, the questions multiply. What is really out there in space? Who might be listening to our radio broadcasts and monitoring our thought patterns? Who might be out in the vastness of the universe searching for the answers as much as we search for the same answers to the riddles of creation right here on Earth? In the years to come, scientific research must face the continuing challenge of space travel as mankind moves forward in the race to conquer the universe, spurred on by the internal political tensions of the globe and man's own quest for knowledge. Man can learn to live in space, but he must adapt. He must adapt or refuse to and not survive. All of the craft that man flies in space must be subjected to an endless series of quality control tests. And all the parts of rocket ships are manufactured to the closest tolerances that man can imagine. Mankind reaches into space, and by reaching into the secrets of the cosmos, he is reaching into the innermost secrets of his own creations. Why not sit back, relax, and come with us briefly on a journey through all the amazing worlds of scientific endeavor as we tour the world of the technological race for space. Mankind subjects himself to continual tests of endurance, submitting himself to many G's of gravity in tests designed to see how long a man can endure in space. Man must know a great deal about himself, his own tolerances and needs, before he can really step out into the world of the unknown. The astronauts who landed on the moon went through months and years of exhaustive testing before they were pronounced ready by NASA for their astounding voyage through space. And now, come with us to the launching pad and see for yourself the incredible expense and scope of a conventional interplanetary rocket. Long before the takeoff, technicians must check the rocket to make sure that it will survive the long journey through space and safely return the astronauts to Earth when the mission is over. The technicians know that human lives hang in the balance, that human ambition and human endurance are only as strong as the equipment which men must use to take them from the pull of Earth's gravity.
into the skies. The blast seems interminable as it agonizingly stretches out the seconds before we are truly in the air. The locks fall back, the safety hoses are disconnected, and the rocket slowly glides off the launching pad and lifts into the air, clearing the gantry with only a few hundred feet to spare. Think of the enormous expense and incredible technology needed to put a rocket into orbit. The men, the thousands of man hours, the work and the sacrifice so that man may conquer the stars. fluidly moving through the air, 
clearly visible as being a disc-shaped object of no known earthly design. This photo, too, has been declared genuine, bearing no evidence of tampering or trickery. Here is another view of the same object. The UFO was moving so fast that the image was blurred because the shutter was not fast enough to freeze the image. Again, this photo has defied the experts. This photo was taken on July 17, 1956 in Drakensberg, Natel, Africa. And the craft performed incredible maneuvers in front of the photographer while a large crowd of astonished witnesses gathered, all of whom would later swear to the authenticity of the incident. Mankind is continually at the mercy of the elements. The storms and the natural disasters which plague man are still largely mysteries, although now, with his satellites and weather stations, man can forecast the weather with a certain degree of accuracy. But still, he often makes mistakes, and the elements remain unpredictable and sometimes menacing. This hurricane is being tracked as it closes in on a coastal town, and the pictures which are taken by the weather satellites spell one thing, trouble. The pictures which make up this global weather map can accurately forecast local weather activity. And although these maps may assist mankind in accurately pinpointing the area of storms, as well as their activity, mankind is still a sitting duck for whatever the elements feel like dishing out. Man is on the receiving end. He is not in control of the weather. The pictures come in and are analyzed by weather experts. And by going over these photographs carefully and subjecting them to computer analysis, these weather experts can make the decisions which will help the local authorities save lives. Man is dependent upon a stable environment in order to survive. And by forecasting disasters before they happen, the physical damage and psychological trauma of a hurricane or tornado are minimized. As the reports come in and the pictures shape up, it becomes clear there is only one path. A certain area must be evacuated. Again, these sort of weather disturbances have been linked to UFO activity. And some have even speculated that tornadoes are often the work of UFOs, leaving a terrific tailwind in their wake and aggravating the already unfavorable weather conditions into true hurricane or tornado weather. The head of the Weather Bureau draws up maps, aided by the computers, which by storing the information on the hurricane in its memory banks, can chart incredibly accurate path predictions for the storm, and at amazing speed. The computer-operated pencil scribe traces a thick line on the weather maps, the line of evacuation. The local police and civil defense squads swing into action, bringing in emergency supplies and evacuating the citizens who are directly in the path of the oncoming storm. Every available means of transportation is pressed into service. School buses, trucks, anything. But those people must be evacuated and lives must be saved. There are only seconds to spare, and then the tornado hits. The path of the destruction is enormous, and the costs of the destruction will later be estimated in the many millions upon millions of dollars. But at least, there will be no human lives lost because of the destructive fury of the storm. There is nothing that can be done for all the property lost, but the people are safe until next time. The fury of the storm is incredible, ripping up beachfront and destroying lifelong possessions and property. But look at the whole thing from a cosmic point of view. What does it matter in the vast design of the universe? These events matter nothing in the overall cosmic scheme of things as mankind struggles to understand the secrets of the universe, although plagued by disaster and sickness at home. In the larger view, the affairs of man are of little consequence. Mankind's trials and tribulations are just a split second in the life of the universe, a life which is reckoned in the millions of years. Who can say what is really as important in the scheme of the universe as a human life, except perhaps an alien life somewhere out there in the illimitable vastness of space. And so our sentinels of the skies, our silent watchdog satellites, continue to make pictures, keep records, and survey the surfaces of the planets, assembling the most exhaustive cartographic evidence man can obtain, and giving man a more accurate picture of the amazing universe that he lives in. As we touch down on the surface of the moon, what do we see? 
we see the many, many rocks, the craters, the seemingly barren expanse of the moon stretching before us in all of its glory. But what is beneath the surface of the moon? And of course, what is in the moon's past? What secrets does the moon have hidden deep in the mists of time as we go back to the dawn of the universe's creation and speculate as to how the universe was created? Many scientists think that the most logical theory is the Big Bang Theory, the theory that the universe was started by a terrific explosion of cosmic gas and debris. And in this past, is it not possible that the moon harbored intelligent life? This UFO was photographed over southern Italy in the summer of 1968. The UFO was seen by a large crowd, all of whom offered sworn affidavits to the military authorities, who, however, preferred to forget the incident. This saucer was photographed near some power lines in late 1976 in Southern California. The UFO is clearly visible in the daylight sky. There are often many UFO sightings near power lines, power stations, and the like, suggesting that these things interest UFOs. This UFO was photographed over the Benadim Airport in West Virginia in the spring of 1968. Again, the UFO was seen by many observers, all of whom agreed that the aircraft was definitely not of human origin. This is another view of the Drakensberg Africa sighting and shows the UFO clearly visible in the bright sky. The UFO sighting was one of the most spectacular of the recent rash of sightings. This photo of a UFO near some power lines again was taken in California in the fall of 1976. The sighting was one of many and for a time it appeared a UFO might have even landed but there were conflicting reports on a landing. This UFO was seen near Eagle Rock, Virginia in May 1978. Note the classic disc shape of the UFO as it hovers over the ground. It was seen by 10 witnesses. This UFO was seen over Prince Edward Island in July of 1976. The UFO sighting was one of many in that July and August and was considered one of the more authoritatively reported UFO sightings. This elliptical flying saucer was spotted over Dallas, Texas in 1973. Again, the disk shape is readily apparent and the photo has been subjected to detailed analysis. This UFO was photographed off Nantucket, Massachusetts in the summer of 1977. Again, the outline of the UFO is unmistakable. And this UFO sighting joins the file of the ever-increasing number of UFO sightings. This UFO was seen flying through a clump of trees and photographed by a man who was just out for a stroll who happened to have his camera along. This is considered a genuine UFO sighting. Do UFOs come from the moon? Are we being visited by men from the moon? Men who wish to visit our planet and make our fondest dreams come true? Dreams of interplanetary peace and harmony? Dreams of dominion beyond the stars as we take our place in the order of the universe? These maps show that perhaps a civilization did exist on the moon, but that civilization is perhaps just a memory we mentioned a while ago. The vast barren expanse of the moon's surface may yield up a vast treasure trove of knowledge on the secrets of the universe, but it may also serve as a grim warning to mankind that we must wisely use our knowledge or perish. Mankind's brief walk on the moon did not really change anything. It simply made man more aware of his responsibilities in the universe. The trip to the moon and the eventual exploration of the planets beyond the moon and the planets in our solar system is a necessary first step in the understanding of the universe. But as we claim the moon for ourselves, for the United States, does it not seem rather incredible that we should have the nerve to claim the moon as ours, when in fact the moon belongs to no one? It is the moon which has claimed us. Since the dawn of time, man has felt the strange powers of the moon exerting its will upon him and noticed the pull of the moon's gravitational forces on the tides as well as the pull of the moon's forces on the affairs of men. 
Long ago, police noticed that during a full moon, the action in a given precinct will greatly increase, particularly crimes of passion. What strange force does the moon exert on the affairs of men? Is this strange power of the moon a legacy of its former inhabitants? We cannot be certain, but the questions remain for us to think on and wonder. On the moon, our astronauts, though engaged in serious work, exhibited a slightly playful manner. Is this a result of the influences of the moon, which made our astronauts giddy and spaced out? keep watch on the mission as they monitor the progress of the mission from the ground. Masses of information come in from the spaceship's computers, the information which is automatically stored on videotape and computer tape for later analysis by the engineers for mission control. These okay. engineers know that they have a responsibility to get the data clearly and correctly recorded, and then to make the swiftest possible analysis of the materials. And finally, it is time to lift off back to planet Earth. The small shuttlecraft takes off, bearing the astronauts on their way back to Earth. The material collected on the moon is then brought back to Earth to be subjected to detailed analysis by the technicians of mission control. The microscopic examination these rock fragments get may tell us more about how the solar system was formed and how mankind came to take his rightful place in the universe. At mission control, the scientists examine the results of the mission. The precision with which the data is examined is incredible. Nothing escapes the scrutiny of the scientists. disrupted. 
and we wonder about man's role in the ever-changing universe. Will the visitors from outer space help us in our quest for peace or enslave us? We wait in silence for the answer. Our drone satellites tell us many things about our land. We learn more about our crops and how they grow, about cycles of growth which affect the foods we eat, the grains we feed to our cattle. In older times, man had to trust a farmer's almanac to predict the weather, and often when the almanac was wrong, the farmer went broke as crops which he had planted according to the almanac were destroyed by late frosts or early summers. This is now all in the past. Weather satellites furnish the farmer with six-month forecasts, which are often astonishingly accurate. Now the farmer can plant his grains with confidence because he knows that the crops he plants can be counted on to grow. These same satellites can do other kinds of surveillance as well. They can be applied to military uses and could be used to scout out enemy missiles in a foreign country. But in addition, these satellites can deliver clear pictures of residential areas and facilitate an enemy attack. And suppose the UFOs in our skies are actually the military reconnaissance drone picture satellites of an alien civilization. These satellites could send back clear pictures of all of Earth's defense system to an alien civilization and pave the way for an alien visit or attack. Man can use the satellite pictures to help him to control pests which plague man's agriculture and which cost millions of dollars annually in lost crops and damages to fields. In addition, computer technology crossed with agricultural husbandry enables man to produce many millions of silkworms which spin fabrics used in some bomb sites and in many part synthetic blend clothing products. But these computer biological skills can be used for far more sinister applications, as in the development of a series of laboratory clones or laboratory parasites, which might accidentally be released and cause severe biological damage. Perhaps aliens are using computers to help them breed a race of attacking drones, which will permit them to enslave the Earth with effortless technological ease. Man still has much to discover in his search for ways to control even earthly parasites. Recently, during a garbage strike in New York City, the police did not let out the information that, because of the lack of garbage pickup, rats were beginning to breed out of control in many areas of the city. The rats were living in garbage dumps and still proliferate in such New York areas as the South Bronx and the poorer parts of Brooklyn. These rats carry the bubonic plague and many other diseases, attack babies and cribs, and have been recently reported at lengths of up to three feet. If man cannot control even such a lowly animal as the rat and the cockroach, how can he hope to effectively combat an invasion in the form of small parasitic monsters feeding on human flesh who would come from the stars to attack mankind from within his own homes? Such an alien invasion would be nearly irresistible, and with the aid of UFOs, these parasites could be introduced effectively and without much commotion. We return to space. It is quiet. All about you, only space. On the surface of the planet below, a rocket ship loads more mineral cargo for the Earth. In the future, we may be able to mine many precious minerals and oil or other products from the surface of the moon, or perhaps Mars. This spaceship has an unusual design and was designed by a noted astronomer and writer in the late 1950s. On the surface of the surrounding planet, it is quiet. Then suddenly, another payload from Earth is dropped to the colonists on the surface of the planet. It is the not too distant future, and we are watching the colonization of the furthest reaches of the universe. The bright sun shines down mercilessly on the planet and makes us cling desperately to our air-conditioned life support system within our ship. For here in deep space, in the midst of the majestic symphony of the moving planets as they whirl carelessly about the solar system, we understand that we are really the children of the universe, bound on a voyage of discovery and knowledge which will lead us onward to a destination which we do not even know the name of. There will be new planets to explore and new worlds to discover. There will be a thousand and one incredible adventures to be witnessed in the new universe as man discovers the secrets of the distant heavens. We move through space with incredible speed, leaving behind our own 
galaxy, the Milky Way. There are all around us clouds of dust and spectral dirt. They form the vast nebula of other galaxies, galaxies which we will someday explore. We travel through these distant galaxies at incredible speed, moving carelessly among the planets with a rhythm very much matched to their own. In this not too distant future, we have mastered the art of time warp space travel, which enables us to cover great distances in space in very short time spans. There are many, many secrets waiting to be discovered in the astounding and mysterious universe. Another ancient drawing, this time found on the wall of the burial tomb in Peru. This design clearly seems to be that of a spaceship, complete with pressurization chambers and a fuel thrust system. Here is a flying saucer of the drone picture taking variety, only three feet in diameter, hovering over the ground in Mexico. This photo is widely thought to be genuine. This is the shadow of a UFO and the airplane it was photographed from, taken by an airline passenger in 1963 off the coast of Britain. This UFO was filmed in 1964 in Oregon and is considered one of the most authoritative of the UFO photos and has been subjected to much expert analysis. Nineteen sixty-five. This UFO was photographed over England by a retired barrister from Kent. The picture caused a sensation in the daily press. Nineteen seventy-four. This exclusive photo was a front-page sensation all over Europe. Truly, it seems as if the UFO controversy is becoming hotter all the time. In the early part of this century, the Wright brothers took out a patent for an airplane. Their design became the first heavier than aircraft to fly, and Orville and Wilbur Wright had earned themselves a place in history. In this rare early archival footage, we see some of man's more serious attempts to conquer the air. The first flights were short, but they proved the point. Man could fly through the air and leave the ground in a heavier than aircraft. By the 20s, the aircraft was a common, though still daredevilish thing, and the pilots often risked their lives to fly in planes that were unsafe and in any event untested by time and often manufactured with no respect for any kind of safety standards. These planes now hang in the Aviation Hall of Fame, answering the honor roll call in the history of aviation.
pilots were the mavericks of their day, and their stock and trade was thrills and chills. They toured the country fairs, risking their necks for a few dollars for anyone who would watch. The attitude of these men was anything for a thrill. These stunts are still incredible, and none of this footage is faked in any way. This is all real. By the late 20s and early 30s, America was flying high, high over the towers of New York, over the stately canyons of Gotham. America had grown up flying and was loving it. Ever since man took off from the ground on that first day at Kitty Hawk, man knew that he had a destiny in the air. And bit by bit, he was fulfilling it, becoming one with the birds of the air, flying high among the clouds. design of his aircraft from the birds, man has created a series of the most exactingly designed planes ever created, culminating in this incredible Starfire jet, which cruises at supersonic speeds and has amazing maneuverability. Here, the jet is tested in a wind tunnel. in the air at last. This NASA experimental prototype is one of the most sophisticated flying machines ever built by man. Here we see the assembly of the space shuttle at the NASA facilities in Houston and Florida. The body is assembled piece by piece, painstakingly put together by dedicated technicians who work around the clock to build the incredibly costly but incredibly necessary space shuttle. This is the first step towards a rocket built for later use and re-entry to Earth. For instance, on the way back from a trip to the moon. And everything has to be just right, engineered to the most exacting tolerances. on the side of the craft. The space shuttle is ready for its first flight. It takes to the air, piggyback on a larger plane, which will release it in the air. Soon, we are in the air, aloft in the shuttle, on its way to outer space. The plane will release the shuttle when we are in the Earth's outer atmosphere. in the NASA complex, the Rocketdyne engine is developed which will power the space shuttle into its voyage to the edge of the universe. Skilled technicians work around the clock, working against time, working against the pressures of technical accuracy, working to perfect the perfect engine for the space shuttle. The space shuttle must depend entirely on this engine. Without the engine, the shuttle will fall to Earth, to destruction, perhaps burning up in the Earth's atmosphere. The shuttle can have no backup engine. Therefore, it is imperative that the one engine on which it must depend must be of the highest quality. The engine is continually tested for thrust, accuracy, and dependability, and nothing is overlooked. Everything is checked and rechecked, and at long last, the space shuttle is ready. The engine of the craft will require an enormous housing, and the mothership to launch the space shuttle will require a huge frame. The enormous size, even of the parts for the space shuttle, makes it necessary to use huge hangars to house all the construction sites. These construction sites are under tight red light security. 
and everything is checked again and again and subjected to every possible test. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong in the testing procedures. The engine, all the parts of the spaceship's body, every part, every circuit of the spaceship is checked and rechecked. And every part of the spaceship is subjected to the most rigorous stress tests imaginable. And again, without the aid of computers, mankind would not know how to test or design or even fly these enormous space shuttles and space stations in the future of man in the universe. When we get into outer space, more than ever before, man will depend upon computers to keep him up to date on important information. How else could man possibly keep track of the vast amount of data that he has to in order to accurately coordinate every part of a space mission? The task is too enormous for one person to coordinate. The whole project must be carefully considered. Every step must be checked to make sure that nothing goes wrong in space, where there is very little possibility to correct a major planning error. The massive logic consoles of a computer can assist man in his thrust into space. But again, these computers are tools which can be used for or against man. Who knows what the future holds? Who knows what strange mysteries lurk in the outer reaches of the universe? Mankind is still researching, still putting together all the pieces of an extraordinary puzzle, which he continues to work on even until this very day. And computers can help man to accurately draw pictures of what the future will be like, what conditions will be like on the Earth hundreds, thousands, even millions of years from now. With the aid of computers, many scientists feel they have been able to predict the approximate age when the solar system will burn out and our sun either expire or explode in a haze of cosmic dust and ash. That day will not come for many millions upon millions of years unless we ourselves, through our savagery and ignorance, through our hate and stupidity, turn our own planet into a barren nuclear wasteland in the aftermath of an atomic attack. The computers draw charts which help us to better predict what things will be like. But again, we must always remember that the computers are no smarter than the information that we feed into them. That for all the miles of magnetic tape, a machine is still a machine. And the computer is our slave, not the other way around. The computer can make our lives easier, or it can enslave us all. Idi Amin, the infamous recently deposed African dictator, used computers in his state research center to torture and maim, even murder, many thousands upon thousands of innocent people. Imagine a Hitler tied into a computer bank. The thought is horrifying. But in space research, computers continue to be a valuable tool to assist us in our search through the stars. Without the aid of these thinking miracles, we would be little more than dreamers, unable to make our dreams come true. Technology can make our fondest dreams come true, if used wisely, or it can turn our lives into living nightmares. At every step of the way, computers assist in the reprogramming of any possible computer error, programming and reprogramming until the calculations come out correctly. Without these computer-assisted programs, man would not be able to fly or design any of the spaceships he would need on a voyage across infinity. Commercial aviation on a continental basis would be impossible. Air traffic programmers would find it impossible to schedule so many flights. And every aircraft landing would be a tricky affair. Thanks to computers, we can plan a future among the stars. Yes, the stars, the stars in the heavens, the stars which shine as we travel through them at incredible speed. And wait, what's that? Could those be UFOs from an alien civilization flying towards us with a greeting or a warning? Could these three specks of light be UFOs from an alien planet? We cannot be certain. In all the vastness of the universe, there are still so many mysteries to unfold. We look around us as the planets silently glide through the reaches of distant interstellar space, and we realize that here, in the outer reaches of space, all the hopes and dreams of the most ambitious mind will find fruition. Mankind truly belongs among the stars.
if he can reach them. As we silently pass by the planets, we wonder, what sort of alien life forms will we find on them? Will these aliens be humanoid or appear in a shape very unlike our own? Will these aliens be our friends or our enemies? Will these aliens work with us or will they destroy us, ruthlessly crushing us in a bloody alien invasion which comes without warning, without a word, an attack with no mercy? Here we are then, amidst the beauty and serenity of the universe, floating effortlessly among the planets. And we wonder what secrets they may hold for us. Are there really UFOs in the skies? Do UFOs come from other planets far beyond our own galaxies? And do they bring us visions of peace and fruitful harmony? Or do they bring terror? Why has the Air Force so persistently abandoned Project Blue Book in spite of the ever-increasing daily flood of new UFO reports which continually cross the desks of the most respected government scientists and researchers? What sort of secrets are there really in the current UFO controversy? What sort of future is there in store for us as we consider the question? Is there life on other worlds? Is there a race out there, far in the distant reaches of space, which awaits a visit from us? Until all the facts are known and all the evidence is put firmly into the light, we will never be certain. Recently, in the summer of 1978, the United Nations chaired a worldwide conference on UFOs and decided that UFOs were a matter of grave national concern while our own CIA steadfastly refuses to admit that UFOs even exist. Secret. Right.